Well, I I grew up in the north. I grew up in northern Canada, so I've always been surrounded by northern topics. I um, I decided to um, spend my career working in Russia because I was very interested in in how northern peoples in Russia might share a similar life to people in Canada. So I've um, I've always been very much rooted in my my own childhood growing up in Canada and trying to understand how northern environments affect people. Well, fire is very important because it's very hard to survive in northern places without fire. So it it, um, is, it provides a very central role of heating, of, of providing a way to cook food, of um, marking the place that is your home, of, of providing a home for the animals that you might live with. Um, in the research that I'm doing, I'm trying to focus more on how fire might be useful both to people and to animals and not just necessarily to people. So I try to look at how it creates um, entire landscapes and not um, just serve as a tool for cooking or, or, or for heating, but, but rather defining the place where people live. Well, I've been very challenged by looking at archaeology because I wasn't trained in archaeology. But what I've found is that um, when I work together with archaeologists, that I'm, um, I'm more aware of small details of, of how things are constructed, of how um, depositions happen on the ground. And, and I, I, I have a much greater precision in, in what I'm observing. And so I find that I um, learn more by having a kind of an archaeological uh, point of view. Um, I, I don't have the skills to do the very fine laboratory work that a lot of people do, but I'm, I'm hoping that by knowing what to describe when I do the ethnography that it, it helps the collaboration with archaeology. Well, um, hmm, it's a very broad question. I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, ar archaeologists in, in general have very detailed studies. Um, I, I suppose that a lot of the archaeological studies in some parts of the world are um, built on certain stereotypes about what human behavior might be or what animal behavior might be. In general, in, in living contexts, there's a lot more complexity. And if you put all of that complexity into your archaeological model, it might be difficult to try and do your work. And so I, I suppose that... Um, my in in the discussions that I have with my team, where I'm working with ar archaeologists, it's often trying to encourage people not to rely on certain st stereotypes about how um, a certain mode of survival is appropriate for an Arctic environment, and looking at at very more complex and flexible ways that people might find a way of surviving. It's a very abstract question, I know, I'm sorry, but um, in a specific case, I, I suppose I, I could think of um, um, an example that, that we were trying to, in, still are trying to interpret a very strange site in, in northern Russia on the Yamal Peninsula. And, and there's a lot of um, stereotypes that go into the formation of complexity, that if you find a large collection of animal bones, that there must have been a very complex civilization with a very much hierarchy, without perhaps looking at the way that, that people um, might have been using either wild or domestic animals or, or a type of animal that might be in between a category of wild or domestic that, that perhaps we don't even experience now, but a different quality of, of relationship that might have um, structured the way that the bones came to the site. Um, and, and looking at options like this is something that um, I, I think um, a dialogue with anthropology and archaeology is quite useful.